Hi, Mr. Harris here. Uh, now, I love a game of dominoes as much as the next man, but I'm not here just to play games. I'm here to give you an example and a problem that will hopefully help you out when it comes to solving uh, unit multiplier and dimensional analysis problems. Now, let's just pretend, for the sake of argument, that uh, this is not a domino, but rather a number. Now, uh, we've used unit multipliers in class a lot, and uh, it shouldn't be too hard to imagine the black line in the middle of this domino is the uh, fraction bar dividing the top and the bottom. You notice the bottom's blank, no value, nothing in the uh, bottom half of this fraction. Now, let's say the top is a unique unit that we're trying to get our answer in. So instead of nine purple dots, imagine it as uh, meters, per se. Um, unfortunately, we're starting with another unit. One that is nothing like the one that we want to find. Well, what can we do? We're going to multiply by a series of fractions that are each um, actually equivalent to one. For example, if this is a meter, perhaps we want to use the fact that there are 100 centimeters in every meter. That would be a fraction with uh, different units, top and bottom. but they're really the same value. You notice the way I, I've arranged this. Not only do we have uh, a fraction with two different units, but it's arranged so that the bottom of the second fraction has the same unit as the top of the first one. This means that when we multiply all of our tops together and all the bottoms together and divide those two answers, these two units can cancel out. That's good. We want to get rid of units, not carry them all the way through our answer. So, um, if we were following through, it seems like the next unit that we need to get rid of, because remember our final answer will be right here, our nine purple dots, uh, would be to somehow dispose of this right here. I think we can. I'm sure you're following with me now. Say that now we need to somehow dispose of and cancel out our uh, orange unit here. Well, with only one more application we can. With this setup, using our original here all the way on the left, and three other fractions, we're able to cancel out our yellow unit, our green unit, and our orange unit, leaving only, look at that, purple, what we wanted in the first place. So here is our problem. How many atoms are present in a 49.5 gram sample of FeO? That's iron 2 oxide. So what are we asked to find? How many? Specifically, how many atoms? Uh, we, we're going to start with a mass, 49.5 grams, and we know what it's the mass of. F-E-O. So let's start at the end, the way I like to do. I'll put my equal sign and atoms. I don't know exactly what this number of atoms is going to be, but I know that my answer will be in atoms. That should guide me as I pick the units and the, uh, the fractions that I need in this case. And let's actually put down the beginning as well. You know, we have 49.5 grams. And not grams of just anything, but grams of iron oxide. And it doesn't tell me grams per or grams in or um, anything other than this. So I know that this is over 1. All right. Now, we don't want grams in our answer. We need something that allows us to cancel out grams. And just a good rule of thumb with these problems, we're probably going to deal with moles at some point. So let's start by figuring out, well, what's the mass of a mole of iron oxide, FeO? Uh, quick check the periodic table. It should give us that. Fe has an atomic mass of 55.845 grams. Oxygen has an atomic mass of 15.999 grams. If we add those two together, we get 71 0.844 grams. Let's note that. I'm going to put this up top. We'll add it into our problem as we need it. 71.844 grams per mole of FeO. All right. Uh, remember that the mass of a mole of any element is its atomic mass. If you're wondering where this number came from, we looked up the atomic masses of the periodic table, simply added them together because there is one iron atom and a one oxygen atom in this compound. Okay, now grams will have to be canceled out the next one. Luckily, we just wrote down a fraction, a unit multiplier, that includes grams. There are 71.844 um, 
four grams of FeO in every one mole. All right, I'm going to get a little premature and cross these units out right now. We can see that we will have less than one gram. We're going to do 49 divided by about 71. We're not done yet though. We don't want our answer in moles, we want it in atoms. Now, do we know anything that uh, is a really easy conversion that includes moles? Oh, well, yes we do, in fact. The definition of a mole is uh, that it's uh, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd power of something. It's a counting number. Uh, so no matter what we are counting, this is how many there are if we have one mole of them. In this case, there are 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd power FEOs in every one mole. In some cases, we'll say atoms. In some cases, we'll say molecules or formula units. Let's just be very specific in this case. Say FEO. All right. Just like the colors of the dominoes, I need to make sure that moles will cancel out. So one mole goes in the bottom of my fraction so that this will be able to cancel. And 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd power FEOs. Now, does my answer ask for units of FEOs? Uh, no, it doesn't. It says atoms. So let's dig just a little bit deeper for our last step. Um, in every FEO group, there are two atoms, one iron and one oxygen. So this gives us our last unit multiplier or fraction that we'll need in this case. In every FEO, remember, I need to cancel out this last unit, so we'll have to put this FEO unit on the bottom. There are two atoms. Notice I kind of constructed this unit multiplier. It's not a normal one that we would use, but it's one that it's not that difficult to figure out from what we know. We know the compound, and we can see from the formula that there are only two atoms contained in there. Now, crossed out this unit, grams, crossed out this unit, moles, crossed out this unit, FEOs, we're left with only one unit, atoms. Is that the unit that we wanted? Why? Well, yes, it is. So, let's multiply the top of all of our fractions together, and then the bottom, and we'll divide our answer. All right, so 49.5 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd power times 2. equals 5.9598 times 10 to the 25th power, a very, very large number, even larger than this. 5.9598 times 10 to the 25th power. That'll go above our fraction. I'm running out of room of it there. And then down below, we can skip our ones. They won't change our answer. You can include them if it makes you comfortable, but 71.844. Our final answer will come from dividing these two values. So divided by 71.844. Giving us a final answer of 8.30 times 10 to the 23rd power atoms. Now this makes sense. We started off with not quite one mole, but not that far away of FEO. I can tell that because uh, we started with almost 50 grams. One mole would be about 71 grams. We had to multiply by two because each of these units contains two atoms. It gives us a very large number, slightly more than one mole of atoms. Alright, so in 49.5 grams of FEO there are 8.30 times 10 to the 23rd power atoms. There are some sample problems after this. Give those a try. Uh, there will be some more videos later on to help you out with some other specific kinds of problems that you may encounter here.